Hi, everyone, and welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John Dottilio. It was one of the best regular seasons in women's hockey history as the Tigers finished with a record of 22 1 2. Head coach Scott McDonald's team was rewarded for their efforts, earning the right to host the ECAC West postseason tournament as the number one seed. RIT hosting for the first time since joining the conference in 2007. The Tigers facing six-seeded Utica in the semis at Ritter Arena. First period winding down. Danielle Reed the shot. Courtney Kunachika deflects it in an RIT to a 1-0 lead. But the Tigers didn't put the Pioneers away until the third period when Sarah Dag put in the empty netter in the final seconds. RIT wins two zip in a game where goals were hard to come by for the nation's top scoring team. You know, she's a really good uh, initial shot goalie, so in, in practice all week we worked on uh, a lot of screens and tips and deflections, um, and that's how we scored the, the only goal was kind of on that uh, similar play. But, you know, playoff hockey is everybody's, you know, uh, more intense defensively and trying to just kind of shut teams down. So we, we figured it'd be a really tough day to score. I mean, we've had a lot of games that haven't been high scoring, but um, I think the goalie played really well today. and. Um, we, just, we didn't get our breaks, but we, we had a lot of shots, and we put a lot of shots on net. We just weren't bearing the rebounds, but it was a good game overall. So the Tigers advance to the ECAC West Final against their biggest rival, Plattsburgh State. This is the third meeting between the two schools this year after they tied their first two games. Third period action, Tigers trailing one zip, but on the power play, Tracy Galbraith the shot. Tanisha Hiller jams in the rebound for her ninth goal on the year. We're tied at one. Under three minutes to play, RIT on another power play. Hiller fires a cross-ice pass to Courtney Kunachika, who puts home her 10th goal of the season. It was 2-1 RIT. Final seconds ticking off the clock, and the Tigers hang on and can finally celebrate. They win the ECAC championship for the first time and earn an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Well, up until like maybe the last five minutes when we hadn't scored, we were still trying to solve the, solve the goalie. So it was pretty tight the whole way and just figured as soon as we maybe get one, then, you know, you could get some momentum and some excitement. And um, it's just getting that first one under our belt. You know, it's been a tight series with them the whole, the whole time we've played all three games. And this game was no different. So, but as soon as that buzzard went, I was ecstatic. I was really, really, really excited about it. What are your feelings on moving on to the NCAA tournament? Um, it's really, it's really exciting because um, I've heard about the NCAA's and um, this team hasn't really gotten like I don't think they've made it, but um, I don't know. It's just like it's a big deal and um, um, it's just an exciting time. The Tigers welcomed Adrian to Ritter Arena for the NCAA quarterfinals. Scott McDonald's team beat the Bulldogs twice during the regular season, and RIT had no trouble this time around. First period, Melissa Bromley the shot. Courtney Kunachika deflects it in. It was 1-0 Tigers. Kunachika set an NCAA record with three goals and three assists on the day. Senior Katie Stack also had a huge afternoon. Here in the second, she puts the Tigers up 6-0 with her second goal of the day. Then moments later, she nets the hat trick with her 20th goal of the year, RIT advances to the national semifinals easily with a 10-1 victory. With more on the victory, here's our very own Kristen Clock. The RIT Tigers face the Adrian College Bulldogs in the Tigers' first NCAA playoff appearance since 2007. The Tigers defeated the Bulldogs at Ritter Arena in a blowout and will now advance to the semifinals. This was you and the Tigers' first appearance together here in the NCAA playoffs. What was that like for you controlling any nerves you had coming into the game? Uh, there was a lot of nerves coming in. We talked about it all week in our house. I live with four of the other girls. Uh, it was like a lot of nerves, but I think we prepared ourselves well and like we didn't have to be too nervous on the ice once we started playing. It was pretty, I wouldn't say nervous coming in, but I think we're all just really excited to be here and um, we were looking for a good game. Everyone's going to come out and play us tough, so 10-1 um, win, you can't complain, I guess, but I guess it's a pretty good feeling, so. What did you tell your players coming into this game? Uh, it really was just, you never know how many cracks at, you, at the tournament that you'll have, so when you're here, let's make the most of it and just go out, use your skills and speed, just have a great time being here, and then you know, you'll have a great crowd, everybody's cheering you on, so why not go have some fun? And you had two players getting hat tricks today, and many of your girls had multiple points. What was working for them today? Um, everything, you know, right from the start, we, uh, the first couple of shifts, we want to get real, get right, right after them. And, uh, 
you know, a couple quick plays, a couple quick goals, and then all of a sudden the special teams kind of takes over on the power play. And then I think just the depth on our team really came through today where everybody was feeling great and everybody was con it was contributing. You had a goal and a few assists tonight. What was that like and what was working for you? Our power play has been working the entire game and just my goal, I guess, right place, right time, because I didn't touch the puck until then. <laughs> um, but our entire power play was working it around and I think everyone touched the puck on that power play. So. Those goals made you so you have the highest career goals in the program history. What's that feel like for you to hold that record? Uh, that's amazing. It's something I was shooting for since my freshman year coming in. Like, I knew Scott wanted me to be a goal scorer, and that's what I did. And I'm just happy to finally break it and like get it off my mind. <laughs> uh, I think it's a special moment for her. You know, she is a goal scorer, and that's what she does. You know, and to finally get that out of the way, I think is special for her. And uh, couldn't be happier. She's been. It's been a long time coming, and she's put a lot of work into into improving that part of her game and you know finally getting rewarded for it and a game like this on the biggest stage is uh, is unbelievable. You scored three goals and had three assists in today's games and that's six points which is an NCAA Division three tournament record so what's that like for you and what was working for you today? Um, just trying to be in the right place at the right time and um, keep my head up and looking for the, the passes and um, just shooting getting more shots and if you shoot more then you hopefully score more. So today's 10-1 game usually isn't typical for the playoffs. What do you guys have to remind yourself coming into these other games that could be closer? Um, just don't underestimate anyone and um, come out hard and just keep that that same tempo um, from the game to end. What's next for you and the team and how are you guys going to prepare for that? Um, I think this is what we've been looking for all year. We want to make it here so um, just being prepared practicing obviously this week is gonna be tough but um, just keeping our heads in it I think is gonna be tough so uh, for us as a team we gotta win the next game we don't look ahead to the championship we just play the next game and it'll be exciting to play the next three teams whoever they may be you know next week's a you know a new game new team coming in it'll be uh, two strong teams we don't know who we're playing yet um, but a new set of new set of games and that's just restart and refocus on a new team and away we go the Tigers hosted the Vision 3 Final Four at Ritter Arena on Friday, March 18th and Saturday, March 19th. RIT faces off against Middlebury on Friday night, 7 o'clock in the National Semifinal. Still to come on Sports Zone, the defending Atlantic Hockey Association champions begin defense of their title on home ice, and the sky's the limit for this RIT pole vaulter. Welcome back to Sports Zone. Now, for the fourth time in the last five seasons, the RIT men's hockey team won the Atlantic Hockey Association's regular season title, earning the top seed in this year's AHA playoffs. RIT hosting American International game, one of their best of three quarterfinal series at Ritter Arena. And the Tigers got on the board in the first. Brian Potts standing on the doorstep, pokes in the rebound to give the Tigers a 1-0 lead. It stayed that way until the third period. Andrew Favitt with the pretty pass to Ben Lynch, who scores his sixth on the year to zip RIT. The Tigers would get four in the third as Tyler Brenner Scored his 25th on the year on the power play. RIT shuts out AIC in game one, 5 0. Well, we wanted to get off to a quick start and get our crowd going, and, and I guess we did to a certain degree with, with a 1 0 lead, but we weren't able to extend it for so long. They stayed in the game, and the longer the game went on, the, the more worried you get about uh, bad bounces, uh, you know, lucky goals or good plays on their part and tying it up. and and really taking our crowd out. So we stuck with it. Uh, I thought Shane came up with some real big saves um, to get our feet under the ground. And once we got the second goal, we, we started feeling a little more comfortable. And then I thought we went from there. It's playoffs now, and we all had to buckle down and sort of just keep our keep our heads throughout the game. So it wasn't really too much of, a, of an adjustment from the regular season. But uh, just playoffs is a whole other level of, of play that you have to bring your, your play to. So uh, that's what we, we focused on all week to get ready for, for the game. In a three-game series, it's only it could be one win or one loss, and then you're down one. And you got to, your backs are against the wall. So we wanted to come out and and get the one one game up and uh, see what happens on Saturday night, and then uh, hopefully finish it off on Saturday night. We didn't want to come out and 
and lose the first game, then we're, we're our backs are against the wall for Saturday night. So it's going to be very physical. I mean, uh, for some players, it could be their last hockey game. I mean, for seniors and. Uh, so both teams are going to, you know, come out strong. I expect the same thing tomorrow night. I, I think it's going to be physical and uh, hard fought, and, and uh, I think the team that keeps the discipline and capitalize on their chances are the one that are going to win the game. Game two, the Tigers looking to close out the series with the Yellow Jackets, but AIC got off to a good start shorthanded. Nielsen Archibald with the backhander to beat Shane Matalora. AIC led 1-0 after one, but RIT would settle down. Second period, Adam Mitchell takes the centering pass and puts it home to tie the game at one. Later in the period, Cameron Burt fires it in. Sean Murphy puts in the rebound. RIT went up 2-1. It was a big second period. Tigers on the power play. Tyler Brennan with his 26th on the year. He becomes the all-time leading scorer in RIT history. Tigers sweep the series with a 5-1 victory. Was there any extra pressure knowing that you were first seeded in the competition? Well, I think there's always a little pressure on the first seed to uh, to meet the expectations, which is to win the series. And uh, uh, But I think, you know, sometimes pressure is good for your team. It, it uh, big pushes them and uh, it uh, keeps them on their toes. I think if there's no pressure, then sometimes you get very relaxed and that's when uh, you can lose and, and upsets happen. I thought uh, we were very relaxed. I thought we had a very good first period. We didn't get, uh, we didn't score, and we got scored on. So, I, but I thought we played very well, and I, I think uh, it was important for us to just uh, uh, stay calm and, and uh, stick with the game plan and, and, and really get off to a good start in the second period. And I thought we did that, and then we got ourselves rolling and, and, and got the goals that we needed and had some great penalty kills, and, and Shane did a great job in goal for us as well. So I thought all those things uh, contributed to the, the success of our second period. From last night's game, did you change anything, tell the team anything different? No, we, we wanted to play a lot from the top of the circles down uh, to their goalie a lot more. We wanted to get the puck deep and and uh, not give them any easy opportunities or give them a lot of power plays. And uh, that was what we were trying to do and, and, and just try and create some, you know, uh, a lot of scoring opportunities from the top of the circles on in. And I thought we did that uh, tonight. Are you excited to move on to the next round? Yeah, definitely. Um, Get, that was one of our goals to get back to Blue Cross and then uh, go from there and hopefully do well at Blue Cross and make it to regionals. So um, we're very excited to be to be back to uh, Blue Cross and, and win with two games and not have to play the third game. We're excited for the opportunity to defend uh, what we were able to do last year and it's going to be a big, uh, big weekend for us and we'll do our best. RIT was well represented at the 2011 NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships in March. Seniors Matt Marion, Nicole Varbel, and Mike Dempsey all competed at Capital University in Ohio. Prior to the event, SportsZone's Jeff Blossett caught up with pole vaulter Mike Dempsey to discuss his remarkable and record-breaking RIT career. The 2010 season is about to come to an end for senior pole vaulter Michael Dempsey, but he still has one more test ahead of him, the NCAA Championships, where he looks to improve upon a second place finish last year. Michael, you have broken your record a few times this year. Can you give us your thoughts on that? Well, we knew it was going to happen, so <clears throat> we just didn't know like how high I'd go or like when it would be, but I broke it pretty soon in the season, and uh, I'm just looking to break it more. So, can you give us your thoughts about what was going through your head before and after the jump? Uh, before the jump, I was just, I was nervous because I was down on attempts. So I was in second at that point. So then after I made it, I was real pumped. So I was real excited after that. Great. Now, isn't it true that you beat one of the top ranked pole vaulters at that meet? Yeah, I beat, he's ranked number two right now and I beat him at the meet. So it's a good positive going into nationals too. Mm -hmm. Now, how important has Coach Senecal been in your development? Uh, he's been uh, real important because when I transferred in from Albany, I was only jumping 15-9, and that, at the end of the season last year, I jumped 16-11 and three quarters. So I PR'd by over a foot with Coach Tentacles, uh coaching. You have gone through some injuries in your career. Can you give us your thoughts on that, especially your most recent one? 
I, uh, I hurt my knee in the beginning of this season, but I just came back strong. I did the therapy that all the trainers told me to do, and I worked out, and now I'm back where I am. <laughs> do you think that knee injury will affect you during the NCAA championships? No, I don't think it's going to bother me at all, so it hasn't bothered me lately. How was your previous experience in the NCAA championships, and how do you think that will help you going into this year's? Um, I guess just having the experience from being there, knowing what the competition's like, how hectic it can be at times, and just having that background is real good. So what are your opinions on the season so far? Um, so far, it's been a little rocky. It went up and down. I know how it at States, but I came back strong at ECAC, so I'm pleased going into Nationals right now. So just looking forward to jumping high. <laughs> Mike Dempsey finished fifth at the Indoor Championships with a vault of 5.12 meters. Mike McAnally will be remembered as one of the most successful wrestlers in school history. Earlier this month, the RIT senior traveled to Wisconsin to compete for a Division III national championship. As Olivia Androsa reports, McAnally embraced the opportunity that a major injury almost took away. From day one, Mike McAnally has exceeded his own expectations. So what were your expectations coming into wrestling here at RIT? Um, as a freshman, uh, I wasn't expecting much. I ended up doing a lot better my freshman year than I expected. Went to the national tournament, qualified every year I've been here. Um, won the conference as a freshman, actually, with a r really good comeback in the finals. Um, so it was, it's been great from the start, better than I expected. But after three tremendous seasons, McAnally's wrestling career was put in serious jeopardy when he was sidelined with a major injury. I had spinal surgery last year. It was it was pretty crippling, um, as you can expect. Uh, had to take six months off, couldn't do anything. He sat on the couch, sat around, absolutely hated it. Um, got back in as soon as I could. It was still bothering me. Had to take a couple more months off. So it was it was a long road back to this season. And uh, just got back on the mat at the beginning of the season, um, and it's been you know going really well. That's really not holding me back at all this year. That's what the, my doctor told me. He, I was having issues with it at the beginning of the season. He uh, did another x-ray and MRI, um, said, you know what, it looks fine. He's like, any pain you're having, don't let it hold you back. So I didn't, and this is where I am. At 34-3, and three, McAnally is now ranked fourth in the country and has once again qualified for nationals. My biggest goal, obviously, is winning a national championship, and haven't, I haven't done that yet, so I'm looking at one more chance this year. McAnally will be in familiar territory when he returns to the championships, having finished as national runner-up his freshman season. The, that's the closest as you can come to a national championship, you know? And uh, there was a couple bad calls that kept me from winning that match, and, you know, I, I got there, I did everything I needed to, I wrestled my at the top of my game, and it just didn't happen. But, you know, it was a great feeling being there, and, and it was a great trip. And what experiences will you take from that to bring into the next championship? Um, you know what, just being there and, and having all the pressure, the crowd and everything, it really never even affected me the first time, but now I've been there, I've, I've felt what it's like to be in the finals, be up on that big stage, and now I want to go in and win it, you know. McAnally will most likely fall short of the all-time wins record here at RIT, a title held by former teammate and wrestling partner Luke Baum. Luke Baum, who was my uh, partner a couple of years ago, has around 147 wins. And I think I'm going to be really close, uh, but coming second. So that's all right. So do you think that he's helped you out a lot here? Luke's helped me a lot. My coach has helped me. You know, all the guys who are in here, it's uh, wrestling. Unlike, unlike uh, having a, a coach in your corner yelling during the game or, or your teammates passing the ball to you, there's, your practice partner is really who you gain the most from. And uh, Luke, me and Luke really, really learned a lot from each other. We both gained, earned All-American rec uh, recognition together two years ago. Um, and it's really great to have another guy of that caliber uh, in the room with you every day. McAnally once again fell just short of his goal, losing in the national championship match of the 133-pound weight class. He finishes his remarkable RIT career with 141 wins, second all-time behind Luke Baum. 
Well, that does it for this edition of RIT Sports Zone. Don't forget, for the latest episodes, we're always on at RITSE.com. And you can also stay up to date with Sports Zone by following us on Twitter and friending us on Facebook. So until next time, thanks for joining us in the zone.